Well, you know, it's just back again. And the excitement of just, I can't help repeating the same thing. In fact, a lot of people say, how can you keep saying the same thing over and over again? Because it's new every day. You know, the Bible says our mercies are new every day. In other words, he gives us a fresh portion of what we need. I guess it was like the children of Israel when they're running the desert hungry, God gave them the manna, which is angel food. That man must have kept them. And you know, the funny part of it is about man. God said, now look, you collect what you need and you got to use it. Don't try to store it overnight. And what's the first thing man does? Try to store it overnight. And what happened? Got worms in it. And he says, like, it's a Saturday. I want you to get a double portion because I don't want you to collect it on Sunday because there won't be any. And so what man does? He ran out there on Sunday. But finally, 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 when man finally realizes they can't continue to get around God, and I think that's what happens to us when we truly, truly become Christians, and God loves us so much, He holds us, He disciplines us, He keeps us in order, the way He wants us to be in order. And what, what I'm saying is, you know, every day is a new day. There's a lot of struggles and battles. And a lot of times, even Christianity it comes, becomes like routine. And you just keep going, and all of a sudden you, you, you kind of lose a little bit. But then God comes right back with a little something or other, to get you back excited again and getting on with this thing. Well, we've been here in, in this Dream Center place for quite a long time. Just tr every day, just winning and building people, going about our business, doing what we believe God wants us to do with that excitement just burning in our hearts. And like I say, every day is a new day and you've got something very, very special. So along the way, here comes people into the program. If they hear about us because we've been preaching in jail, we've been preaching on the streets, or a lot of people that have unfortunately have been here don't quite get rooted and grounded and they go back to jail or back to prison. They tell other people about us. And so we do, we get a lot of people here. And every once in a while, no, I won't say every once in a while, there's always new people coming and some of them are flat out characters. I mean, to tell you, God sends us, I think the lowest of the lowest, the worst of the worst, the biggest rebellious people, you know what I'm talking about, but that's God, that's, he makes us, that's his specialty, is working with people like us. I mean, people like us. And the, the thing is, it seems like people like us, when we really, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good, we really do taste and see, we realize how good God really is, how much he cares for us, how, how, how more than willing he is to straighten us out and give us a hope. In fact, he gives us a hope that's, it doesn't fade. It gets stronger and stronger. Can you imagine that? I remember when we first started church on the street, I met a man out in the street, a very intelligent man. He was a CPA and it took me six months to finally win him to the program. First of all, I took him to church and he finally, finally gave his life to the Lord. And from that day on, he quit smoking, quit drinking, no more drugs. And he, be, he became, we put him in another program because we didn't have our residential program then. And then next thing you know, it's time for us to get our residential program, and he came in, and he, uh, he was my right-hand man. And just to see what how God was able to do with him, brilliant, unbelievable man. In fact, he met a younger girl, they ended up getting married and had a little child, and they were with us for, he was with us for 20 years, is, is my right hand. And sure enough, the Lord took him home. But just to see what God was able to do in, in people's lives, and I mean to tell you, he was a character. But God made characters. You know, God made each and every one of us in His image, and He made us for a purpose. And here's the neatest thing. I pray, if you really love the Lord, and, and you really mean business about God, why don't you let Him develop you into what He created you to be? You know, so many people try to put on. Why? You are what you are. And I'll tell you the truth, we're just dumb sheep. Bleh. That's really what we are. You, you think we're anything more? No. Sheep can't fight. All they can do is bellyache. You know, the interesting thing is, if you want to think about sheep, they get a full um, head of wool, they fall down, they can't get back up. It's too heavy. They need some help. You know, one sheep will fall, another sheep, no, all fall off the cliff. If one, that's where one goes. You know, see, the thing is, we as people, we, we're, we think, well, we compete with other people, thinking that that makes us better if we win. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and powers. Rulers of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. So therefore, when we finally realize who we are, it's just 
people create an image of God and for a purpose. We are creating an image of God, so there's, not, there's no junk. We're all very, very important. The enemy's the one that lies to us, telling us you're dumb sheep, you can't do this, you can't do that. And some people get so beat up. That's, but I'm going to tell you something. We, when we go out and share this good news for, for you today, in fact, we had a young man here last night. Lived out in the streets, kind of like a gangster, selling drugs, actually involved in really hurting people. He's been here, and man, he bawled like a baby last night in one of our service. I talked to him this morning, and I can just see the power of God in his life. He wants this, he, but he's, he's, you know how we are, we're so macho, but he's finally starting to listen. He's having trouble with some of the, the tweaky little leaders we have here trying to tell him what to do, and you know how they do. They're, oh, God told me to tell you I'm the boss, and he's been struggling to fight with that. But then after talking to him, you can just see God working in him, working in him, giving him that new hope, that new purpose, that new life. And I believe this one man, God has chosen him to be a leader. Why am I saying all this? Well, every once in a while, God will give you a character. Oh, Lord sakes. This one here can sing. Boy, he can talk. I tell you what, I bet you if he went to, to the cold country, he could sell any Eskimo a refrigerator and grin about it. And, that, and you know what I'm talking about. But see the funny part of him. Him, he's had his own personality struggles, and nobody really cared about him, I don't think. It really took the time to truly, truly care about him. And I just look at him, and I just say, hey, there's a neat man. God has got a hold of him. He's got a lot of talent, singing ability. In fact, we get in my bus. I got speakers on my bus. We drive around the streets. with my bus with two crosses on the side, to, doing outreach, just telling people about Jesus. And he'll get in that old bus, and he'll start singing. You'll see somebody alongside, yo, Jesus loves you. You with that blue coat out there. Lady that's walking across the street. You know how much Jesus loves you? He's just got that personality. And I can just see God working in him, building him, helping him to grow. And he's kind of like my right hand right now. In fact, he came in the other day, he says, I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. He says, am I, am I you know, alongside you? And yeah, he is. And just, it's just kind of neat. In fact, the other night, and we have a, it's called Grand Avenue. It's a diagonal street in front of where we live. And down to just about where it ends, there's a low, low rider convention every Saturday night. A bunch of low riders out in the street, you know, late at night. And so but take, we took my bus down there one night and just went right down the middle with our, our singers just blasting out Jesus with the crosses on the side and the bus is talking about Jesus on it, you know. And he's got his motorcycle in front of us. He's leading us. He's guiding us. It's just so neat to see what God can do in different people's lives and how they're able, he's able to change them and give them new heart, new purpose. There's nothing better than that. And how much, we're just going to try to get him to come up here in a second and just share what God's done with him. But oh, this is the funniest thing. He's one of those ornery guys. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the, one, the little uh, lead in here about Nikki, how she was so ornery. And she got, really got a hold of her and changed her and she's given her new hope, new purpose. All of the above, you know. He's the same way. But he slipped back a little bit. He's going to do what he wanted to do. Nobody's going to tell him what to do. So finally, we're doing a jail service. Me and old Gator. And guess who was in jail at that jail service? This old rascal. He's got the biggest grin on his face. And we're, come on up here, you old rascal. Get this old guitar, pick it up, and start singing. So Felix came in. He picked up that guitar and started singing. And by the way, when he got out of jail, he thought about coming back. And I guess he did it for a little while. Then he took off again. But... One day, one of the guys was out, one of our leaders, and had to run into him and draw him back. And here he is. He's been here for a long time now. He's doing really, really well. And God is using him mightily. This is what it's really all about, is simply letting God be God and getting involved, getting involved with selling out to God and what's, what God can do in people's lives. So I'm going to turn it over to him. <laughs> what up, everybody? Hello. My name is Logan Anthony Felix. And don't take that one down for the record, because the cops call me Logan, my family calls me Anthony, everybody else calls me, everybody knows me as Felix, like the cat, the wonderful cat. Anyway, I love Jesus. Um, I love Pastor Walt, and uh, I think he always, he always says the best about people. Even though sometimes, you know, he'll slide in those, those <laughs> the things that may sound like, 
oh wow, that, if, you, if you're not familiar with Peshwar, you'd be like, man, that was, that was a little harsh, or he doesn't, he's just real. He, he says it how it is. And whenever he does hit you with that, you know, the rebuke stuff, it's, it's good for us. Um, well, what he was saying about um, how I came to church on the street, I've been in and out of programs, um, institutionalized, a statistic, and I knew how to, I've always known how to play the role, play the part. You know, uh, church on the street is probably, I think, the best place for me that has helped me grow, no, how it's helped me be transparent because um, you have a lot of freedoms here and a lot of, it's a lot more of a real life scenario and a lot of eliminating self. So um, this is the first place I decided to start exposing the devil for his lies and speaking the truth or speaking confessing my sins, confessing those belief systems that I had established in my heart or in my mind that were chain, uh, holding me back, you know, chaining me down. Um, and I think it was the first time he ever called me up and he said, what do you have to say? You know, it's all because I was just smiling. I was smiling because I love it. I could see his spirit. You know, he's very... You could see the Lord, the love, that, un, that unfailing love. I can only imagine how much uh, he's gone through, but he still loves no matter what through it all. But he called me up and he goes, what do you have to say? And I couldn't stop myself. I could not. And I grabbed the mic and I said, I'm a fake. He was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know why I just said that. He gave me the mic and he sat down. I said, yeah, I'm a fake. I'm a wannabe. Uh, I, it, and I just kind of elaborated because I, I know that God created us in love, to love, for love. Um, it's all about love. And the way the world is, the way my mind was, the way... Um, society and the, uh, the courts and ever since I was a youngster, you know, they were pruning me, making, calling me a statistic saying, you're going to end up dead by 23 in prison for the rest of your life by 25. And, um, all this stuff, they said, you're a, you're a compulsive liar, pathological liar, um, master manipulator. And so I played on that, but growing and going through the stuff. I knew how to play the system. I knew how to play the part. I knew what the counselors and all the people they, they wanted to hear. So I was good at that and I had them all believing. So then I started believing it myself and I started, um, I got to a point where I thought I was playing God. I was, I was deceitful, a liar. I mean, it was, it was crazy and it, my whole world was starting to revolve around that. And then when I, I really wanted to change, but the devil had a hold of me, you know, and, and it was um, here when <laughs> I had been the Holy Spirit, the anointing just comes through him. So when you're in, you're in Pastor Walt's presence, he stays prayed up. So he's got that. And it's like, boom, it was broken down. And when I said that, I, I, I realized, yeah, I really am. My whole life, I've, I wanted to be the hardest. I wanted to be the coolest. I wanted to be the meanest. I wanted to be the baddest. I wanted to be, I was a wannabe. I love God so much. Um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, maybe I'm not the only one, but getting emotional when you realize what Jesus did, the reality of the cross, the sacrifice, um, salvation, and then being lost and trapped in that lifestyle and then coming into Christianity or or serving you wanna you definitely wanna be able to share that for everybody. And the only way to do that is 
not, not trying to change people, but telling them about Jesus, showing them what changed or what changed my life. Love is what broke down my walls. Pastor Walt was willing to go out on a limb, um, put his neck on the line for me, uh, vouch for me. He said, follow me. I'm like, what? All right. I think a month later, I went back in his office. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, me, Pastor Walt. What? what? Follow? You sure you want me to follow you? He's like, oh, Lord. What do you, anyway, you know, and uh, I think it was another three months later, I asked him again, are you sure? Because in my life, everybody's given up on me. And I think the second time I asked him, I explained that um, I was given up for adoption. Um, when I started running amok, at, uh, I started getting in trouble with the police by 10. 13 in juvie. By 15, my mom, who adopted me, uh, she said, I don't want him. Take him. Do whatever you want with him. Um, and I got, I was good. I, I spent up until 17, just before I, a little bit before I turned 18 uh, in group homes. And, um, but again, it was always, it was, the family didn't want me. The people didn't want me. There's all this wah, wah stuff, right? And uh, he's, I'm used to it. I think a lot of us are used to people giving up on us. And um, Pastor Walt, I've learned in my walk that man will always fail you, but God won't. So I'm not relying on Pastor Walt not giving up on me. I'm relying on the fact that he's got 40 years, 40 plus years, dedicated, consistent, He's a great example of a man, this would be crazy to say, but a man whose footsteps I would, I would follow in. I mean, it's big shoes, but I, I love what he, I love that path. If there was no program, no building, no anything, I know that Pastor Walt would still care about people enough to commit his life to helping others or telling them about Jesus so they could be saved. Soul winning, winning and building people. Romans 8, 28 says, For we know that God causes all things to work together for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And even anytime something bad happens or crazy happens in my life, it takes, it may, it may, at first it's like a shock, but then I'm like, this is awesome. And because that just means something great is right around the corner because God's going to use it. He was the only one that supported me on, on uh, getting a motorcycle. I love the motorcycle. It's a great thing, even though I got into a wreck. <laughs>